Okay guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be getting the 429 heads taken down to nothing so that we can ship them off to the machine shop. What that means for us is that we have to get the manifold bolts out of it and the valve springs out of it. And the valves. So, um, if things seem a little out of order, that's because they are. Um, I did actually mount the motor block and all that after I did the heads. So, things are a little messed up. Um, but yeah guys that's pretty much what happened I just kind of posted the videos backwards because I didn't have this one done yet so anyways guys without any further ado let's go ahead and get started alright so right now we're about to try to remove these uh, manifold bolts um, the manifold bolts are pretty much these studs sticking out right here so we're going to try to get those out the W4 we're going to try to get these out of both heads um, so that we can go ahead and uh, move on so he, right now uh, I sent Victor down to the building to get a pipe wrench so we're going to try to break them loose and take them out. Probably end up getting new ones of these because these are all rusted and old. And this is going to be a nice new engine with some nice pretty headers on it. So, Plus we need to get these clean. So, yeah guys. But today we're still working on these heads over here. This one is completely done. I got the manifold bolts out of the side of it. And all the valves out. But, it's my tripod. Oh, we still have to do this head. And I just went ahead and did that one as a practice run. So that I'd know what I was doing so I could actually explain to you on this head. So I've been working on these bolts for a while. And what I've come up with is... So what I've been doing is I've been taking... I have a bunch of nuts that fit on there. And I've been threading them on. And... Putting them down on my impact like that. Then I've been taking like a lock washer. Or two. And sticking on there for a little extra support. Running another nut on there, not that one. This one, it has a little cap on it. Gives it a little bit of extra support. We'll put another lock washer on there. Running that on there. And so I now I have it set up like that a nut, two lock washers, and another nut. And then I have another one that goes on the end of that. And then I get a flare nut like this and put it on here sorry I'm trying to hold this camera and do this all at the same time put it on here tighten this down with my impact and then trying to break this free now there's a problem I ran into with that it's not wanting to break free so I have a torch so I've been heating this up with a torch while doing all that and uh, you can tell that's very difficult to do with only one hand so I'm not going to be able to actually show you while holding it I'll have to try to set up my tripod the best that I can. So, let me try to do that right now, and I'll get back to you. So just to re-go over what I just went through, I have nut on the back side, two washers, one nut, and then another nut. And what you have to do is hold this like this. You don't have to have an impact. I'm just using an impact. Tighten them down as much as you can. Okay, flip that around so that it's easier to do. And then there's a lot of force on that. Okay. But what's gonna make it a little easier is this torch. Okay. And I'm wanting to save these heads, okay? I'm really want I'm wanting to use these heads. I'm not so I'm worried about what happens to them. So what I do is I use what's called a cheater wrench as well. Real quick, let me just show you what a cheater wrench is real quick. So a cheater wrench is basically this. You put this on here. Hold on, I gotta remember how to do it. It always, it always messes me up. I never get it first try. So like that right there. Then you can pry down on this with a lot of force while using this other wrench as like a breaker bar almost. So that's what I've been doing on that as well. While all that's happening, the torch is sitting on this. So hold your torch like that right there. Get that heat started to build up. And then apply some force on it. You'll kind of feel it give a little bit. That's good. That's what you want. But you, but see, the problem that you run into is all of those nuts will start to spin. You don't want that to happen. You want to see your actual stud spinning out. So holding this torch on here is really good for you're heating up that. You're heating up those threads, making them nice and loose. There, I, these things have also been soaking in WD-40 for like the last three days. I've had the head turned up on its side, so. 
I'm trying to I'm trying to avoid stripping out these heads and having to rethread them as much as possible. So I'm doing the best I can to get these out without tearing anything up. Looks like we're about to run out of gas. I got some more over here. Maybe we can get this one. Ah, uh, nope. All the nuts are spinning. Jam hat back on there. Get that down. Lock down tight. I know that impact's really loud. I've also got a big impact. I'm just this little one has done has did the last one, so I'm figuring maybe it'll do this one. Get a better bite on that. Never mind, maybe not. Possibly. It, it look, started to turn the stud a little bit. I'm talking to the camera. So as you can see, as you just you may not have seen, but I'm gonna because I'm gonna have to do some cuts there. But it did start to move the stud a little bit. We gotta get a new bite though. Another nice idea might be to get like a half inch drive adapter on there or a half inch drive socket. That's it, the stud's moving now. Now, once you get the stud to move enough, like that right there, you can now cut your torch off. And now that it's moving with this, a little bit of WD 40 on there is not going to hurt. Okay, but don't don't let up until you like it like right there it's free so now now the stud is coming out you can probably take your cheater wrench off now just do it with the wrench now before you get this all the way off there's a lot of pressure on these right here so you definitely want to take your impact and go ahead there it goes and it took those off if you don't have an impact this is going to be a pain in the butt but you can get it um, now you should be able to just spin your stud out by hand Okay, so here's the fun one because it's big. So. Not sure how well our stack up's gonna work. That's all I can get. What if I just hit What happened? I thought I broke the handle on my freaking impact. I was like, what the heck?
guys, I need to clean up. But regardless, I got it out. Um, for some reason, whenever I started recording, they started coming out easier. Or maybe it's because I came up with that new stack up. But yeah, guys, try that stack up. This one's now stuck on here. I can't get it back off, but oh well. I mean, it was a worthy sacrifice. These have been giving me fits for like the last two days. So, get yourself some lock washers that can be old and rusted, like these. But I recommend some new ones. New stuff, old stuff. Get yourself some nuts that'll fit over those. And just stack it up. If you think about it this way, the more you have stacked up, the more that has to turn. So, with that being said, it's going to try to turn that stud first. So, that's kind of that's kind of how I got where I am. The heat was a great idea. I ended up not needing it, really, because there was just so much force behind those. And it looks like it didn't really strip out the heads. The heads look okay. So, next thing we have to do is get these valve springs out, and then we'll be good to go. Alright, so, we're taking the valves out of these. As you can see, this is one without the springs. Um... Basically, you have to remove the spring right here. There's these two little retainers you can see right here in the middle. These two little, this little other circle. And then you're left with this right here. And this will just slide out of the bottom of the head. So, basically, you'll need a special tool for this. And this is what I have. This is a valve spring compressor. There's different variations of this tool. This just tends to be the one that I have. But you want to go about three down. So, one, two, about three down. It's about all you're going to be able to get with this particular tool. Um, some of them will like compress it all the way down um, Get yourself a small flathead like this right here Have that ready to go um, One thing I do want to mention is that, I, that I did before I did this Take this off real quick Took in an WD-40 and sprayed in all of these all across the head And I also went with a small hammer Like this and just smacked it right here a little bit Until I heard a springy sound That means that it's broken loose from this middle part And that's going to make it easier Long and don't hit it hard, you don't want to damage anything, and make sure that's why I'm using a rubber mallet right here. So, that's something that I did. I don't really know if it matters or not. This is my first time doing it, but yeah, so just get it on there, get you, get you about the third one down. See, that fourth one right there makes it hang up in the groove. So, like I said, third, third down is about all you're gonna get. Take it like that. You just, there's a bolt up here on top. Let me get y'all. So, there's this bolt on top. You basically tighten this down and it'll pull this up like that. And that is how this tool works. And then after that, you can remove these two center pieces. So. Pretty simple tool to use. And so now you're going to run into the problem of it's pulling up this whole valve. So what I've done is I set it on the edge of the table like this and I push up on the bottom of it with my hand. And as you can see, right here, those little things flopping around in there. Take your little flat head like this and Well, it's not wanting to go. There it goes. And I just took that out with a magnet right there. These little things are what keep that valve in the spring. So, take those out and it should come right out. I just got back from talking with my dad. This is the valve that we just removed the spring from. Take a look at that. That is bad news right there. That means we have a burnt valve in this head, which could very well mean we have a crack in it. So let's check this one out.
So besides the burnt valve that we just saw, <clears throat> I do now have an engine stand. Hey! So, to get the engine on this, I gotta go buy some bolts for the actual block, because the ones I had aren't long enough. Then I'll get some of those, and then we'll be able to mount this thing up to this stand. Now this is an easy turn, so, oh god. So it has this little hand here on the side to turn it with. Um, this one was more expensive than the Harbor Freight version, but the Harbor Freight version just looks cheap. This one came from Jegs. It's pretty nice. The steel feels good on it. Um, so, yeah, we'll be mounting up the block pretty soon. Okay, so we're here at the end of the video. Um, as you can see, we have pistons laying here. Move. Oh, I thought I didn't move. I got to be scared. Um, and we have all kinds of tools out. Dremel, WO. And then our heads are stacked up right there. Um... These videos are backwards. <laughs> this is why I just explained that engine stand. There's clearly a motor block sitting on and parts. So, like I said, guys, I had a lot going on. Things got a little mixed up. We're on track now, though. Um, so, yeah, guys, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.